we are transforming waste materials like waste materials. Remember, when we eat banana, there is a waste material we throw away, isn't it? When we eat avocado, <laughs> there is that hard thing we throw away. Upcycling is transforming that waste material or useless or unwanted product into a new material or product of better quality. But really, I would say that uh, making good use of a plant, the only plant that produces fruit to avoid waste or to reduce waste. So when we are talking of Kenya lacking food, and yet we grow so much, Today I want to change our mindset and our paradigm shift that that part of the food that you are throwing away might be the best that you are doing. Um, so our presentation today is uh, mainly on how to develop a food upcycling economy in Africa, right? And uh, well, a lot of people have been talking about food upcycling. The first time we started, it wasn't, um, it wasn't something that looked like that it could become an economy. It was us helping the environment in small footprints. So I won't even go into more details. I think I'd let mom start by taking the first slide and uh, explaining. She, uh, she will take us through the definitions of uh, food upcycling. Good evening, everyone. We, we want to try and show how developing a food upcycling economy can be done. We've always said um, uh, from trash to cash, or we all have the upcycling matra from trash to cash. And so much has been said about the trash, but today we want to give it a, a different look by developing a food upcycling economy. Uh, move to the next slide. Food upcycling economy is the creative use of food byproducts and other inedible parts that would have been put to waste. For example, when you eat avocado, you will love to throw the seeds. And yet, it is the seed that your body needs uh, most. You can, it is rich in calcium, potassium, magnesium, and iron. And you can use it to make anything you want. The other thing that we, after eating, we throw away is the popo seeds. Popo seeds can be reused to make black pepper and the rest. The other one is the eggshell that is also very rich in calcium. Another example is uh, banana peels, very rich in potassium, and you can also use it to shine your shoes. And the list is endless. And in Kenya, if I might give an example, the malnutrition rate in the country is 26%. But there are three counties that are leading. Trukana is leading. Bomet alone is at 36%, while the national grid is at 26, followed by Taita Taveta. So we are asking, is this definition uh, comprehensive? Is it comprehensive to say that upcycling is the creative reuse of food byproducts and other in edible parts that might have been put to waste? The next slide. <clears throat> We also looked at the, the plants that might be considered to be weeds. 
yet they can be repurposed to make oils and ointment that are beneficial to the body. An example that is given there is, uh, that we've given is the marigold. Marigold is very good with the skin rashes and the air growth. And the body, the, the smoothness of the, of the skin as a whole. Apart from marigold, there is also a weed that is, it is despised, I would use the word, and that is the blackjack. Wherever you pass around it, it will leave marks that you passed there. That is blackjack. Can be used to as vegetable. It can also be used to uh, normalize your blood pressure if you boil it at tea. The other one that we don't use yet sometimes, Africa is very dry and there are no greens, is the sweet potato vines. The sweet potato vines, especially the yellow one, is very rich in vitamin A. But unfortunately, it also combats anemia, but unfortunately we don't use it as vegetable. It is very, very rich in iron. And it also, in South America, they use it as uh, to curve diarrhea. And many other weeds that we throw away. The one that I love most is the, the African uh, marvel, they call the, the Rosel. The tea is very nice. It is so fulfilling and it can carve TV. The next slide, if I may go, what is an upcycled food product? An upcycled food product uh, uses ingredients that would have otherwise be discarded. I've given an example of the avocado seed powder is there. And um, the banana peel. What we are saying when you are uh, doing the food upcycling, know the supply chain of, can, can your supply chain be traceable? Where are you picking them from? Because if you just pick and you don't take good care of them, you can again, create some other problems that might be very, very difficult to curb. And then as you use this part of uh, the food that you are uh, upcycling, are they po do they have positive impact on the environment? For example, the avocado seed powder, if you use it as a air treatment, you can wash your air in the chamber and it act as a manure. So that is a great impact to the soil. It adds nutrient to the soil. You don't throw it away. It is kind also to the plants. Next slide, please. Evans, can you go there now? Okay. Um, so uh, we've, we've, we've... We, we've been recapped on what food upcycling is, what, what a food upcycling, uh, well, what you need when you're doing food upcycling, the steps you need to follow. So let's come back to the food upcycling footprint. A footprint is something that you can trace. It doesn't matter how far it goes, you can trace it back. The first step in food upcycling is making a small change in your food waste management. Basically, um, there's a lot of food wasted all over the world. There are statistics. Uh, currently, it's 931 million tons, right? That's according to the food index that was released in 2021. So normally, the first step is, starts with me and you. That is in your dustbin. When you're doing food upcycling, in your dustbin, 
once you know you, you can use a banana peel to do something else, it's a small change in your household. So in your household, you will stop throwing the banana peel. You will start keeping it aside. You can either use it to brush your shoe. Once you finish to brush your shoe, you can cut it up into pieces. If you have chicken, give it to the chicken as chicken feet. The second step in the food upcycling footprint, it, once it gives you a positive influence as an individual, it can now go to the community because your neighbor will show up one day when you're using the food, the banana peel to brush your shoe. And they ask you, hey, what are you doing? So when you're explaining to them, they also get that knowledge. When they get that knowledge, they transfer it into their household and then to the next household. The next thing you know, your estate is all doing the same thing. They're all doing food upcycling. Secondly, when it comes to the garbage, generally in your community, in your house, once you learn food upcycling, you toss out less. Your waste is less, right? And then uh, after that, once your waste is less, most of the things you're wasting, you discover they can be used to make a drink they can be used to be added into your maize meal to make your ugali better or your rice better. So you end up eating well. And then the next step is your lifestyle is simplified. You stop stressing too much about throwing this out, throwing that out, because when you buy something, when you buy something, you know that, oh, I don't have to waste this. This is going to help me with this and this and this. Your food, at the end of the day, you can find that the only thing you're throwing out is maybe paper or plastic because you can't recycle it. But then again, plastic, you can upcycle it in another way. Thirdly, you save money. The money you would have spent in buying chicken food, let's say, for example, you're buying chicken food for about two kilograms. But now when you discover you can add your banana peels, your orange peels, your, the stalks of your vegetables and cut them up, you reduce the amount of chicken feed you'd have bought for two kgs. Now you're buying half a kg of chicken feed and the rest is the waste from your house. You've saved money, right? Next uh, slide, please. How to grow okay. a food upcycling economy in Kenya, yes? Yes, go on. Okay, so go ahead, sir. in this one, <laughs> in this one I was thinking, there's a lot of, um, in Africa, what we've noticed since we started doing the food upcycling is that a lot of people in Kenya, let me give that example, especially where I stay in Kajiado, there are some things when I tell them about food upcycling, they do not, they do not understand. They look at me like um, I'm, be, I, I'm having a poor man, poor man mindset in that I am so stingy, I don't want to waste from my house. Yet, when I read about emerging markets like America, Britain, you will find that they are having committee meetings government committee meetings in their agricultural industry to talk about food upcycling, to talk about the economy, how it works, how to develop a trademark that when you buy something from the supermarket, it's a food upcycled material. And in the emerging market, they are more willing to buy something that is upcycled in terms of food, yeah? than in Africa. Yet in Africa, we have more of the malnutrition problem than anywhere else, right? So I think the first step, like for example, to do it in Kenya, a lot of people in Kenya don't even know when you tell them food upcycling, they don't understand what you're saying. So I think the first step is awareness needs to be created to a point where our developing country, Kenya, is very excited about upcycling food. Secondly, uh, in the manner of creating awareness, first stop is workshops. Just general workshops to tell people, this is what food upcycling is. This is how you can do it in your house. And I think here it would work better. The problem is 
the, the system to create awareness is not there yet. And in the same spirit, the second point I've put there is incorporate it into your individual lifestyle. Now, the photo you see there, I think I will let mom explain. Because this one she incorporated, this is a picture that was taken less than a week ago. She would explain it better. Incorporate uh, uh, the individual. This is, uh, as I was one afternoon in the village, I was in Kisumu last week, and I called a few women folk who had found me at baked. So they wanted to know the idea of baking. So I called them and we baked uh, afternoon. You can see the cake there. There are two types. The, 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 the first one that the lady is holding on the hand, we did not put avocado powder. But the lower one, we, put, we had put avocado powder and oregano and the mint family and that one. When we were testing the two cakes, they realized that the one that we had put avocado seed powder and oregano and rosemary was more tastier than the ordinary one that they knew. So from here, the women promised that they'll do them in their household every other week so that they have bread for the week. So that is what okay. we did a week ago. So in that, in that, okay, in that uh, context, what I'm saying is, you see how mom has incorporated her into her lifestyle. This is, she does this for normal breakfast. But by doing that, when other people around the neighborhood see the same thing happening, it helps to spread the message. So like every time someone would say, oh, uh, instead of using eggs, I think she failed to mention, when you're using avocado seed powder, you do not need to put eggs into your baking. Avocado seed powder does the same thing that the egg would do, and even better, gives your cake or your bread a tastier filling. Okay, next, next slide. Thank you. Mom, you wanted to add something? Um, these are the workshops. Uh, that is Evans on a workshop at uh, one of the famous primary schools uh, behind the house. And me on the other side, again, incorporating this time uh, during COVID, the Maasai women would visit me. And this particular day as I'm sitting with this to the lady next to me, I'd just used um, marigold ointment to cure her rashes. So she brought uh, a neighbor. And so this particular day I was explaining to her and she's trying to show me the rashes and I had to tell her, explain to her and administer to her uh, the avocado seed powder um, ointment and marigold for her treatment. Next slide. Okay. Uh, so normally. Okay. Okay, you can on. start. You can start. Hmm? Uh, how to grow a uh, uh, food upcycling, uh, blah, blah, blah. So we are still on the, the, the cre cre creativity in value addition products. You've seen the clip Fiona made when I was in Kisumu. I would carry all the plants, I would do the charts. I loved it. I would do the charts, but we've grown from carrying. I've grown from carrying the plants to any workshop that I go to. Uh, now I can carry the finished products and sometimes maybe carry a clip to go and show. And as you look at those products, that is the Chili family. We are having uh, the, the Evans newest that he'll talk about how he does it. And the upper one is my chili ointment for your joints, for your arthritis, for your gouts. And there's a testimony to this. Evans, can you pick up your testy uh, <laughs> creation? Okay. 
Okay, so at the bottom you see I've I, I developed this new product. It's called Apilo. Apilo means chili in Luo. So I had there was a lot of chili in Kajiado. There's a lot of chili. They have so many greenhouses that just do chili. And this chili is taken for the export market. But what happens is they, they have to go through sorting. Once they go through sorting, there's a lot of chili. About 75% um, of the chili will go to the export market. But what is left, they try and sell it to the locals. But it's never enough. So they end up wasting it. It dries and whatnot. So when I discovered this, I started collecting chili. And I used to get it at very low prices to the point where I could get it for 20 shillings per kilogram. So with, with this much chili, I had to figure out how what I do, what Eyal had told me once, everything, think about value addition. So with chili, you, I thought about value addition without adding anything. So what I did is I added salt, I added water, and how do you call it? The old fermentation process. And then I got chili that you can keep for up to one year without refrigeration. It's very tasty. It's hotter than your normal chili. So if you love chili, this is a very good product. But again, the first time I sold it, I just used to do it from my house. So I just tell someone, oh, I have chili. They come, I get them a couple of scoops. Until someone says, you know this thing, if you package it better, we would buy more. So this, the, the poster you see is the first advertisement I did of that chili. And on that first week, I made above 2,000 in three days. So again, when you create something that is tasty and the product, the labels are appealing, people will go for it. Next slide. So the second point is holding focus groups to find out what consumers love. So the first time I sold my chili, I talked to the first group of people who bought it because there's someone who bought there were different products. There's one I had made with um, avocado seed. There's another one I'd made chili with oregano. There's another one I'd made chili with uh, rosemary. So I called them together and asked them, which chili was the best for you? So of course, in focus groups, there are always different, different views. So most of them say, we don't like the chili with the rosemary. We don't like the one with avocado seed powder. We like the original chili the way it is. It makes it hotter, it's spicier, what's not. So at least for me, it gave me the best chili for the market, right? Though I still have people asking for the one with the rosemary, but that focus group helped me concentrate on the right line. Uh, on the next point, ensuring that logo designs are catchy, appropriate messaging can increase consumer willingness to pay. And then make the message rational, not emotional. If you see the picture on the side, I just took one of the posters mom uses for her chili ointment and the avocado. So you see, it's basically, there's no marketing jargon, nothing. It's just written. It is a food supplement rich in calcium, magnesium, what, what, what. When people see this, it's easier for them. They know what they're buying. They know exactly what they're buying. It, it, it's not emotional, it's very rational. They understand it. Next slide. Okay, this one is basically showing the range of products that can come out from food upcycling. Here, I think when it comes to food, generally food itself, from upcycling, you can change the way you, you make food. For example, uh, today I think I'm, I keep insisting on the banana peel. I discovered recently that uh, Liberians, people from West Africa, actually do cook banana peels in their food. When they mix the potatoes, vegetables, that is food upcycling in your food, in your culinary ability. Secondly, juices, I think, is the most popular use of food upcycling. There is a, I've seen a product in the States, it's called avocado juice. It's basically uh, pieces of avocado seed mixed, boiled and whatnot, put into a juice fruit. Medicines, 
I think from, you can see the chili ointment. Chili ointment is good for your joints, uh, what's not. Marigold is good for your face, your hair. Avocado, not the avocado seed now. Okay. Yeah? Yes, you can add, you think? Mom, you say something? The joints, the back, the chili, chili ointment. Uh huh. Go uh, on, okay. go on, Nemos. So, uh, mm. and then when we come to the spices, like my new chili product are spices. They are generally to help make your food taste better, give it a kick, and whatnot. Jewelry from avocado seeds, you can make jewelry. From shells of uh, coconuts, you can make jewelry and all that. Oils and ointments, we all know. Soaps, we know. I think most of us have bought these products from somewhere else. And they're always written, food upcycling. Next slide. Okay. This one was, okay, the last part. When I was thinking about, right now in Kenya, food upcycling, it, it's there, but it's like in hush hush stones. It's like a secret. Not many people know about it. So not many people can actively participate in the food upcycling economy. So the active steps that could be taken in order to achieve this economy in Kenya, uh, I have listed them there. Create an act, active food. So far, I think between me, mom, and a couple of her friends, we don't know, we have less than 20 people who are actively engaged in food upcycling. But yet I know they're out there. I think with more awareness, they would come out. And if all of us would kind of unite and create a kind of network where we talk about these things, we tell people this food upcycling network would be positive in this, in this, in this, it would be very, very, it, it would lead us in the right direction. Maybe in the next five years, Kenya would be the African capital of food upcycled products, right? Secondly, uh, I think the second point emphasizes the past. Increase general and consumer awareness on what is available in terms of food upcycled products. And in this manner, um, I've been looking at the internet and there's this, what is happening right now since June, they have been trying to come up with uh, a sign, a sign that shows this is a food upcycled product, right? This is a food upcycled product. That would be part of the awareness for the consumer. But okay, if this is a, a by the way, if possible, the network mentioned ab above, the food upcycling, network in Kenya. If we come up and now come up with our own, a sign that says this is a full upcycled product from Africa. Anyway, that's just food for thought. People can think about that. Secondly, uh, the third point, improve and create the upcycled food supply chain. Currently, as we speak, um, I had looked at, at some point I had seen that uh, avocado seed powder is sold as a uh, sold oil. And then since we have avocado seed here in abundance, I wish that we I could get it from Kenya into the European Union or into America. And when I was doing that, I came across a Google document that tells me the requirements that are needed for me to supply something like that to the EU, right? And what I discovered is in my country, I cannot meet those requirements, right? Because uh, in Kenya, there is no, what do you call it? A food supply chain management system. It doesn't exist. If it's there, it's just, it, it's a documentation, but it's a document. On the ground, it doesn't exist. So in this one, if we create a, a credible upcycle food supply chain, 
it would help us in growing this economy in our country. Uh, the next point, make upcycled food a trend in Africa like it is in developed countries. Mm, I'm not, even on the internet, when you Google upcycling or food upcycling, whatever you see is products that, there are very few products that were made in Africa. The only one I got from Africa was upcycled furniture, right? So it needs to get to a point to make it trendy. Uh, we need to upload more things that are upcycled. More, if you make a banana cake that is upcycled, please upload it on the internet. If you make, um, what do you call it? Arts and crafts that's upcycled, upload it on the internet. Say, this is from Kenya. This is from Angola. This is from, that would help us make it trendy. The next point. You have to, uh, it says consumers participate in climate change. Uh, I saw an advertisement on the internet from, I think it was in New Zealand, where every product that you buy that is upcycled, they write, you are participating in climate change. As long as you buy this product. I think we need to find a way to make our product be the same way. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Next slide. Uh, uh, I want to add uh, on climate change. I'm saying my firewood gas cooker is one of the one waiting on uh, climate change in Africa. So if people can participate in that, and once in a while the, 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 the Kenya Agricultural Show has a climate change stand that people can visit and see what they have made. That's what I wanted to add. Wind it up, Evans. Okay. okay. Uh, last slide. Okay, so the, the whole idea why I brought up the food upcycling economy, the whole idea of food upcycling came from SDG 12.3, which aims to have food waste and food loss by the year 2030. I think a vibrant food upcycling economy is going to go a long way to meet this goal. It could actually be the spearhead of this goal, right? Because as we speak right now, this is the 2021 Food Waste Index. I think it's the first one that they've done. And even when they did this one, they did not get data from enough countries to give them an actual wastage of food in the con in, in generally on Earth. It is estimated that there are 931 million tons of food waste annually. And 570 million of this is from the household, right? That means food upcycling has to start from the individual for it to grow into an economy. If every household decides to be a food upcycling economy on their own, we will develop a food upcycling economy like next year, if possible. Thank you very much. I guess that's the end of the uh, conversation today. We will take questions. Okay. Uh, I have a few remarks, if, if it's okay. Wow. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, first of all, I think it's a brilliant idea, this upcycle up uh, economy. And it's uh, totally go in line with whatever we have started in top and can take it to the next uh, level. Uh, second, few comments. One, you give you a solution for the malnutrition of Kenya. And this is big. Mm. Uh, and is you huge. don't, uh, it's huge, but it's, you just say it uh, like, like a buy, uh, uh, not so important uh, byproducts. <laughs> no. The mentioning of the multi uh, food upcycling solving problem in Kenya was because if we start getting into that, that's a topic we can do for two hours, right? And that will be part of the awareness for creating the food upcycling economy. Today it was just an introduction. Yeah, but I, I think it's it's a key a key point and a key can be a, a game changer, you know. And I also uh -huh. think. 
I don't think you should go uh, trash to cash because then, then you narrow minded the whole concept. I prefer to go trash to treasure because you get here the treasure is a uh, good nutrition, the treasure is uh, reducing waste and also cash. It's much more bigger. Uh, and if you just do trash to cash, you reduce it. Uh, it's part of the game, but it's not the, not the only game. It gives a much more holistic solution. So first of all, I, I, I want to say for both of you, it's for me, it's really exciting. It's a great revelation. And it's a, it's a, it could be a cornerstone in, in the next phase of, uh, of top um, to move forward. But I think it's a real key. It's a game changer. What you brought here today, it's a game changer. Thank you. Now, Evans. Uh, two things uh, I picked. I picked two things which are very, very interesting. Uh, one thing you mentioned very clearly that we need to be able to trace the source of our food uh, waste so that you really uh, do not create another problem. I think that was very bright. And then the other thing which came in, I just picked avocado only. And I thought about the region of Western Kenya, where uh, during the season, they take a basin like this. Are you seeing me? Mm -hmm. Fill yes, it I'm with avocado. You. Yes, yes, yes. Fill, yes, it yes. With, fill it with avocado and sell it at a throwaway mm -hmm. of 50 shillings. Not one avocado, but avocado full in a basin. Now you can imagine that with this, mind of uh, food upcycling, where we are first and foremost concerned where we get the food waste. If we, you, we create, let, let's say a factory or something like that, that will now buy this avocado and use the, the avocado, the, the, the edible part of it for juice and all sorts of products the outer cover for manure and the stone for all the upcycling. You can see this is now a hole turning this one seed into treasure as Yal was putting. And I think this is the kind of thing we need to think about that uh, apart from collecting the waste, reducing the waste, when people will discover that some of the things they are buying from that organization, they are the waste that they are throwing as the seed is part of the most expensive part of their product. This will be another way of changing the community because we need to set it in such a way that it can help the community to see the major change than waiting only to collect the waste, but also create that waste and then make use of it. That is my input. But I'm very excited about the presentation of today. In fact, I'm wondering that uh, uh, nearly everybody should be here. This is. This kind of information that everybody <laughs> need to hear. <laughs> everybody need to hear this because it begins at home. I was looking at the, my my chicken. Uh, many times I don't give them the banana peels, and I eat a lot of banana every day. So from today I'm going to start cutting banana peels into pieces, so that I give the chicken. I've I've estimated I've tried with them throwing a whole a whole bunch, and they keep running after it. But now you're given the idea. I go cut it small pieces and give my chicken. Thank you. <laughs> no, now on that point, James, yes. I would like to say this. You and my mom eh, yeah. yes. are the spearheads of Kisumu. The idea you've just <laughs> given, you guys can translate yes. it into action immediately. Mm -hmm. That's my point. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think, I, I don't know if she has a, a comment on that. Uh, I'm Well, I, told, I told her in advance, yes, Hello? one network today. Yes. There is poor network, but I'm hearing everything now. Uh -huh. uh, I think this is the beginning. I am commented that we had said the uh, uh, trash to cash. Now we know it is treasure. Mm -hmm. uh, the avocado seed powder, what I'm planning to do now is to make chicken feed. Mixed with uh, the, 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 the husks, uh, rice husks, it can do a very good 
feed money is their treasure and dig deeper. Mm. So, uh, I've said we need to dig, uh, dig and dig deeper. My video stopped and my micro, uh, my, I don't know what happened. So the system is, but I can hear you people. Good. We can see uh, Sebastian has his hands up. Okay, Sebastian. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you so much, uh, Joan and Evans for that presentation. And uh, this is a question that goes now to Evans. I know your professional background is low. <laughs> and now you are doing all this stuff. What was your motivation to do this? And uh, maybe you decided to put some law into upcycling. <laughs> what was the motivation? Evans, you don't want to answer that? Evans. He's thinking on how to, to answer no, Evans, where are you? I think, I think we lost him. We've lost Evans. Uh, yes, we've lost Evans. Anyhow, uh, I, I think till Evans is back, I can say a few more, more things. Uh, first of all, I put, I put on the chat there are at least three things you can do out of banana peels, including vinegar. Uh, second, mm -hmm. I, I have a part of my team in Jerusalem is a food uh, rescuer. So it's, mm -hmm. it's an amazing team that we should see how we can put you in contact. But they mm -hmm. by themselves are saving two tons of food and vegetable from the retail market every day. Uh, mm -hmm. And they got a lot of product from what they can, uh, people are not uh, taking to eat. So it's totally in line with what you're bringing up here of mm -hmm. the upcycle uh, economy. So I think there are more people that we can join hand uh, to let you work together with them. Thank you so much, Ayan. Yes, my pleasure. And I also wrote here on the chat for James and, uh, and our team that I think upcycle food, mm. uh, as, as you develop it, can be a really added value to all the projects we are doing with uh, the Top Shamba and table banking, etc. cetera. Uh, because mm. I wish we could have this type of uh, lesson uh, go for the woman of Bomet and for other uh, Sai or to people of the top chamber, because the moment they will understand it, they can add value, big value to, to this. So mm -hmm. I can really see the connection, but now I see it in, in practice. Uh, and I say James is uh, totally with me. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you are right. Uh, I think yes. Uh, oh, sorry. If we something ah, happened, I don't know. Ah, sorry. Evans is back. Yeah, he's Evans. Sorry, sorry, something happened. I didn't know. Huh? Okay, Evans. Uh, Sebastian asked you, how come you you change from be, being a lawyer to become an upcycle uh, economist? <laughs> Interesting question. <laughs> well, <laughs> what I'll say is, I have not changed from being a lawyer. I just changed what I am advocating for. I'm still a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So <laughs> now I'm, a, yeah, but... I'm, a, I'm advocating for a food upcycling economy. So now I have become an environmental lawyer with a new purpose. Wow. That's big. Yes. Evans, what you said now is big. Mm. <laughs> yes. Environmental lawyer with focusing on a food upcycling. A economy. food upcycling economy. Okay. Okay, I think Evans, we should see how we can help you to develop it because that's that's big what you brought here today. And uh, yes. I think we more or less have to finish, right, Philip? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay, so maybe. Yeah, we should conclude. 
Yeah, maybe James, you want to close the, the, those meetings? That was, for me, a very exciting one. <laughs> well, it's hard to close such a meeting because you, you realize that, uh, one, it is well researched. I, I want Amen. to appreciate the... <laughs> I want to appreciate Amen. The, 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 <laughs> the research work that has gone into it <laughs> to bring it to this level. Two, Amen. it is so practical because uh, where I'm sitting, uh, I've just been drying the the purple seeds, and they, wow. they, yeah, they are ready here for grinding, and that's food upcycling. <laughs> So the purple seeds are here ready for grinding. Where I'm sitting, I have the chili from the farm, which are also <laughs> going to work out. So uh, it's just an exciting moment that you just wonder, how do you Take care of your eyes as you use chili. <laughs> James, take yes. care of your eyes as you use chili. OK. The, the, the black you. seeds also can be very little with your eyes. So take care of yes. your eyes, both two. Yes, we are always very mm. careful with that. Uh, mm. But I think what is coming up here is a big thing. Uh, the last statement, we're talking about an environmental lawyer. Advocate. Uh, advocating for food upcycling, upcycling. economy. economy. Mm. But you see, mm. we have to start somewhere. And I think the challenge we have got today is, uh, I know we have started some small, but we need to upscale it. For a long time, personally, I've been concerned about the loss and the waste of avocado from the Western Kenya region. And I think we have visited those markets and you feel sad because somebody comes with a lorry, pay them peanuts and carry all that to Nairobi and then ends up creating more waste in Nairobi because mm -hmm. the, the, the stone they will not use. How about if we can now create an opportunity working with the farmers in the Western region where the avocado trees are actually already there and we can improve them and create a small cottage industry where we are able to produce everything out of that avocado, upcycle everything out of that avocado so that at the end of the day, there's no waste as compared to People buying it, carrying the whole consignment and increase waste. And so Evans gives us research, the 790 something tons of waste, we can reduce that. Thank you, ladies and gent lady and gentlemen. I don't know whether you have guests today. I just okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye -bye.